hope everybody's having a great day today. Thanks so much for joining me. And if it's your first time, I'm Chantilly Lace, and this is Chantilly's Kitchen Hop. And just to let you guys know, if it is your first time, everything I do is gluten-free, vegan, delicious, and try to be as easy as possible. And if you guys are checking in again, thanks so much for joining me. I have another delicious, pretty easy recipe we're doing today. We're going to be making spi spicy roasted red pepper pasta. Oh, it's so good. It's healthy. We're going to pack some protein in there. So it's just another really good, complete meal that is gluten-free vegan. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. There was a little bit I did ahead of time because I didn't think you guys wanted to sit around with me for 30 minutes while our veggies roasted, but we're going to one if I can talk today. We're going to want to get two red bell peppers. We want one small onion and we want a foot of garlic and then this is optional, but I highly recommend it. I would either either grab an Anaheim pepper or a Hatch chili if you guys can find them because those roasted are so yummy and it just really perks up the flavor of this sauce. So get you guys an idea of what I did. So we just chopped them. We removed the seeds from everything, obviously the skin from the onion. We just want to make them nice, about one to two inch pieces that are going to be easy to blend up. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it and you're going to roast that at 425 for about 20 to 30 minutes. But what we're looking for is we want our veggies to start getting browned and get that roasted flavor to them because there is a, a flavor that definitely comes with that. So after we have this done, we're gonna let it cool just a couple minutes so it's not burning hot, you don't hurt your fingers. We're gonna grab our food processor, or you guys, if you've watched me before, you know I love my Magic Bullet blender. This is just perfect for a two-person meal or one person. So we're gonna just go ahead and load our vegetables into our little food processor or Magic Bullet blender. Just in case, I think I said we roasted these about 20 to 30 minutes, but in case I forgot, I'm just going to say it again. And this is a good two-person meal, so if you guys want, just double it up, and it would be great for four people, or you could even go, you know, more than that. I just, I don't have a giant food processor, so a two-person is always good for me, especially because I like leftovers. I'll give you guys, let you take a peek at my roasted Anaheim so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I don't like to use the jalapeno. I feel like it's just a little too much where the Anaheim or the Hatch chilies just really blend amazingly with the flavor of the roasted peppers and the other stuff we're putting in here. So got all that in there. And then next with our roasted garlic, so if you guys have never roasted garlic, what I did was I cut the top off, drizzled just a little bit of olive oil in there, and roasted it with the rest of the peppers. And they just get this really awesome flavor, and it's nice and soft. So we're going to squeeze out three to four of the cloves. I'm doing four because I like my garlic. But if you guys just want a little bit of garlic flavor, just do two. And it's really easy. You just kind of squeeze the sides, and they pop right out. And I just do a whole foot because, honestly, I love having roasted garlic around. There's nothing wrong with having some extra. So let's go ahead and get this big mess out of our way. And then next, I'm going to start adding some of our other goodies to this. It's going to make it super delicious. So if you guys have watched me before, you know I've done the raw soaked cashews. And we're going to do some of that in this one. We're doing one-fourth cup of the raw cashews and soak them in hot water. I, if you can just do the 30 minutes while your veggies are roasting, perfect. If you can do them longer, the better. They do get softer. And we're doing a fourth a cup of those. So we're just going to toss those in there. Then we're going to do a fourth a cup of sun-dried tomatoes. Just give you guys, I'm actually, I have the one from Kroger's, just their private selection. I have the ones in oil. We're not really going to drain them, but I'm not putting the oil in there. We're just going to grab some of these out until it's about a fourth a cup. So it's about, eh, it's about four or five of these big guys. So we're going to pop those in there. I think need one more and that'll give me, yeah, we'll do two more. The flavor from these is really good, so it's not like, I don't really measure this. I just say about a fourth a cup. Just a couple good-sized pieces, really. 
And if you guys got the ones that aren't in oil, just soak them in warm water for a little bit like you do the cashews. It'll help soften them up and it'll make it a lot easier to, to blend when we get to that step. And then next we're going to do two tablespoons of the nutritional yeast. And I actually have the Bragg's right now, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We're doing two tablespoons. And you can try and start with one, or even I sometimes do three. It just adds a nice creamy, cheesy flavor to this, and it just goes so well, and I love it. Next, we're going to do a tablespoon of lemon juice. Or about a half a lemon, but it's not quite, so that's why I say tablespoon. Got that in there. And then we're going to do about a half a teaspoon of just black pepper for some flavor. We're going to do about two teaspoons of salt, but if you guys want, start with just a teaspoon, and you can always add more salt later, but I like a little bit of salt, and there's a lot of sauce here, so it's not going to be too salty. And then we're going to throw in some red pep crushed red pepper flakes, too. And this one's optional, because I know if you already put in the Anaheims, you might be a little worried about the spice, but trust me, it's so yummy. So even maybe just a little bit, and not quite as much as I did, and then... Last thing we're tossing in here is a half a cup of your favorite vegan milk of choice. And just so you guys know what I'm using, I have that Not Milk. I love these guys. If you've watched me recently since I found them, I use these on all my vegan um, milk recipes. It's just so good and creamy, absolutely delicious. So I'm not sponsored by them, but I do love them. So we're going to add a half a cup of that. Then we're going to pop our top on and we're going to get that blended. I'm not going to make you guys suffer through the sound of that. So we're going to end up blending probably about, I'd say, three to five minutes. You know, just if you have the bullet blender, just little bursts. Don't don't leave it running for the five minutes. You'll, you'll definitely burn your motor out. But we want to get a nice creamy. Show you guys what we're going to be getting. Just a really nice creamy sauce that we're working with there. And you can definitely adjust the milk if you guys think it's a little too thick for you. Just put a little bit more milk in there and it'll just thin it right out. But that flavor is going to stay awesome. And then one last thing I'm tossing in here. We're going to make you guys suffer just for a sec of that obnoxious blending sound is I'm going to toss in just a couple leaves of fresh basil into mine. Fresh rosemary is really good in this too or fresh oregano. If you have any of those herbs on hand or dried, I would definitely recommend tossing in a little bit. It just perks up the flavor. It's so good and I have so much rogue basil growing around my house. I'm always trying to figure out what to cook it with. You know, my bunnies love it, but they can't live on it and I have a lot. So we're just going to give this a quick burst because we don't want to puree the basil. We want some chunks in there, but this is just a little easier on us. Spill that other one. So we're just going to give this a nice little burst real quick. All right, and there we go. All right, so since this is a pasta dish, we would be cooking our favorite pasta. And I already did, I have actually the Barilla's today, and I just got the spaghetti noodles. Don't throw out the water, though. You want to keep some of the water. This is going to be important when we're making our sauce. So we're just going to get just a nice size skillet. You don't need the giant guy, but I would do one with sides because this is a sauce. So don't try, not trying to make a huge mess. We're just going to do a medium to medium low heat. We don't want too hot. And we're going to pour our pepper sauce that we just made right in there. Get all that bad boy out of there. All right, so get all the sauce because we want all the deliciousness. And I know I told you guys save some of that pasta sauce because we're going to toss in a little bit into our sauce. It just really helps thicken it up, and that starch from the water is really the Italian trick in a lot of the pasta dishes. So we're just going to toss in about a fourth a cup. We'll start there, and then we'll get it heating up and stirring and see what we got. Then after we get it going, we're just going to toss our pasta right in here. So it's nice because it's a one-pot dish. Well, kind of. I mean, you did cook your pasta in another pot, so I guess it's two. 
Mm, I mean, just look how good and creamy that looks. All right, so sauce is already getting warm. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, it's so good. So good. Nice little spice to it, but not too much. And then we're just going to grab our pasta. Without making too much of a mess. And we're going to throw our pasta right in there. And I cooked my pasta to al dente, maybe even a little bit less, because I knew it was going to be warming up and cooking just a little bit more in the sauce. So that's also a tip if you guys don't like your noodles super soggy, I would recommend just pulling them off just a minute before they're that al dente. And then we're just gonna get, mm, you hear the squishing going around, get everything all mixed up and warmed up. And this dish is really good with broccoli, asparagus, green beans, even a nice side salad. So there's lots of sides that the flavor of this dish just goes absolutely delicious with. Trying to get everything all warmed up and then we're gonna plate it and show you guys. I'll show you one of the ways that I top it too. Pretty much, I think I let my um, noodles sit just a little bit. I was trying to have everything timed up perfect, but sometimes, you know, get it done just a couple minutes too soon before the show starts. So we're just letting the noodles get warmed back up and sauce is ready. So this is actually a really easy, easy recipe. It's just a little bit of time because you have to roast the peppers and then usually while those are going um, close to the end is when I try to start getting my noodles going so everything gets all timed up. So this ends up only being, if you're doing from beginning to end, about a 40 minute dish, which is pretty nice. Anything under an hour, especially when you're doing vegan, is always good because I know that's one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have is that, um, you know, vegan meals have to take all day and they, they really don't. They can be just as fast as cooking meat. So, all right, there we go. All right, so let me get the plate over here. Got all that stuff going on. I'm trying not to knock everything over. Still gotta learn. I'm trying to learn how to. Um, when you serve pasta, you're supposed to do this pretty little twist with it, but I'm still trying to figure that one out. I never quite seem to get it, but oh my god, just ooh, look how good that looks. And then what I like to do is I throw just a few more fresh sprigs of basil on mine. Just love basil. I know it's just yummy. Like I said, if you did rosemary or oregano, just throw a little bit fresh on top, and the presentation looks really good. And then I like to toss a little bit of feta cheese on mine, and I have the follow your heart, and oh, uh, this stuff is so good. It's actually soy free, lactose free, gluten free, vegan. So it's a nice guilt free one, and we just toss a little bit of that on there because the flavor just goes so so well. And there we go, guys. Look at how yummy that is. And I'm going to take a little bite just to show you how good it is. Mm. I definitely know what I'm having for lunch today. It's so good. Oh, it's so yummy. Those just roasted vegetables really burst out in your mouth. And then that little bit of cashew that we put in there just really adds a nice creamy. So it really seems like it's a cream base sauce even though it's not so we're on the low fat side where it got high protein from the nutritional yeast that adds some good B vitamins in there we have a lot of good fiber from the other vegetables so this really is a nice complete healthy dish that is just absolutely delicious and I think if you made this for some non-vegan non-gluten-free friends that were coming over they would be shocked that this is a dish that is gluten-free vegan so I really hope you guys try this one. I think you're really going to like it if you do. And if you try something different, throw other veggies in there, let me know. I love my feedback from you guys. It's always fun interacting with you, hearing what you guys do, because we all have different preferences or think of different things. And it's just nice to share and get some feedback. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next Tuesday. Have a great day, guys. Bye.